this morning. We're going to see, we may even see Madame Dido die from the courthouse spire. Not into a tank of water, but into a damp washcloth. Who knows? <laughs> Step right up, folks. Right this way. That's this way, folks. Come on, come on. Return with me to those thrilling days of yesteryear. When out of the past comes the thundering, thundering hoof beats of an old mule, maybe pulling a one horse wagon into some hayseed town like Jonesboro, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd set up down near the courthouse and set up and start doing the old time medical. <laughs> okay, anybody else? <laughs> I want to show you folks that you don't have to be big to be great, ladies and gentlemen. But I want to show you that you don't have to be big to be great. Because down in this little red box right here is the most astounding thing that I've found in a long, long time. It came from Circus World in Florida by way of Phoenixville, Alabama. And ladies and gentlemen, down in this box, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you that is not a wild animal, my friends. That is nothing more that than a fur piece, which is a fur collar off of a lady's winter coat. I know that's not very impressive to you, but, but to this, oh, I'm going to introduce you to, it is very impressive. Because deep down in this hairy mass right here, ladies and gentlemen, flee, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> This little flea is much like the flea that you have on your ordinary dog at home, but it's been specially trained and bred to leap through the air. Now this little old flea is going to jump from my uh, left hand over to my right hand, high above my head, arch through the air, and land in my right hand. Unaided and unassisted without the benefit of safety wires. This is all my true love comes. How did you say? It was only my bow. Oh, my, let's get it down now. He looked down on the town. He said, Everyone, close off, brush your teeth. Okay. I say that he's the man that longer is the rooster in his home. And longer is a dio de la casa. Coming to the story festival, the log cabin. This is where the story telling is happening. Tents, people. Second Avenue tent, Radio tent. Jane's for a library. Okay. Think about that. What are you communicating? 
what, which, where are you in the lineup? I, I do a street concert at from five to five o'clock. <laughs> Good afternoon. I like your story very much because we tell, we make children tell stories in India, and I thought you were wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I always feel very nervous before starting. A, what kind of story you want? Because I have a personal story, a childhood story. Okay. And I know a story from the Arabian Nights. Then I have a story for you from uh, the ancient myths. And you know, there are all kinds of stories. So would you like to hear something from my childhood? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, the olders in the family, they wanted us to go to an English medium school. You know, that was a great thing for them for the child to go to an English medium school. We did have a second language and a third language, which was Hindi, which is a national language of India. And then we had a third language, which, which is a local language of the 14 states that we lived in. So you could take one of the languages of the 14 states. So we had to learn three languages and plus the mother tongue at home, which was four languages. And then we had English math, social studies, science, environmental studies, art, craft, needlework and all the rest. So it happened that I went to this school and I graduated up to my elementary school. This was also a school from the middle and high school which was complete. So I went to this school and I was in my fourth grade and we had a co-education school. That is the boys and girls would mix together but there were other schools that had only girls and only boys. So we had the boys and girls and usually the boys would sit on the small bench and all the time he came and sat down and I was falling <laughs> off and I was trying to push him all the time you know and he was trying to push me and the teacher would enter the class and when the teacher entered the class there should be perfect silence. So both of us would move, move and then she would enter and she would bring this long stick with her. Because any time anyone made a noise, duh, the stick would go. So she had the stick on her table and we had the class teacher for a handwriting period too. So we had a handwriting class and she would come around and say, yes, mm-hmm, all right, ta -ta 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 -ta. you know, tapping on each one's table. And we used to, you know, try to get the cursive writing. And if we weren't right, then she would, one of the luck. And we used to be terribly scared of this teacher. And then the most dreaded teacher was math teacher. Because we never understood what she said. Now this math teacher came into the class one day. And both of us were having the struggle of pushing each other. And she came in and she said, Today I'm going to teach you fractions. And we said, oh, fraction, she wrote on the board. And then she said, well, if you take an apple and cut it into half, you get one by two, one by two. You understand? I said, oh, what, what was that again? And I was like quite enamored by the way she said, if you take an apple, <laughs> because for me, an apple was such a small fruit. <laughs> and I was just looking at her and in the meanwhile, you know, Raju was pushing me and I was pushing him. <laughs> And then she said, are you listening? And we said, so you cut it further, you get one by four, one by four. You understand? <laughs> now take down all the problems. One by two plus one by two. One by two plus one by four. Understand? That is the denominator. That is the denominator. Oh. <laughs> and everything went above our heads. And then what happened was, Raju was really pushing me. And I was falling off the chair and I couldn't take it. So I gave him a pinch. You know, I just pinched him and he said, Ouch! 
And when he screamed, the teacher just turned back and said, Now who is that? And Raju and I stood up. And she said, Now come out. And Raju said, But she pinched me. And she said, No. Out. You're not talking. One. But she... One more. Out of my class. And so Raju went and stood outside the class and did this to me, that he won't talk to me again. Because that's what we do when we say we don't talk to each other. And then he stood outside. And you know the best part of it? I had the whole bench to myself. <laughs> and I was so happy because I thought it was the most wonderful thing after years to sit alone on a bench. But then... The class went on, fractions, one by two, one by four. All of you must do your homework. You better come with your homework. Otherwise, you know what the punishment will be. Blah, 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 blah. The teacher went on. And everything went above. And it was going to be lunchtime. I was very hungry. And I was also feeling a little uneasy because I thought, that was not fair. I shouldn't have pinched him. And you know, she left. And we always ate together. Four of us, we would share our meals together in the class. So I went outside and I told him, Raju, come in to talk to you. And I said, you know what? My mother sent lovely sweets because it was a festival day and he loved sweets. So I said, my mother sent lovely sweets. And he said, sweet, huh? Okay. And he came inside. <laughs> and then he came inside, he sat down and we shared the sweets. And he loved the and the raisins and the sweets that my mother used to put. So he picked out all of them and started eating. Now we had our lunch hour just for half an hour. So what happened is it was getting late and we had to be back in the class five minutes before the teacher came. So we said, oh my God. And I closed the dabba and then I went out and we had a long corridor. And our school was the first school that had a water cooler. So all the children love to go and drink water from the cooler. So what happened is I took this long walk to drink water. And Raju came out because he saw the boy who was going to ring the bell. And he said, oh my God, I better go and wash my hands too. So he closed and he came out to wash his hands. I had washed my hands and I was coming at full speed from this end of the corridor. And he was coming out at full speed you know, to wash his hands. So both of us marathon running. And there we banged into each other. You know, and I saw all stars twinkling, shining. I saw the cosmos, the sun, the moon, everything. And I went down. And when I went down, I saw something sticky coming down my uniform. And there was this man who came. He just lifted me up and he took me down. And the next thing I knew, I saw a doctor with a big syringe. Because we didn't have disposables then. So we had this big glass syringe with a big needle. Oh my God, I hated them. And it went in. And I was admitted to the hospital because I had a cut on my head. And there were six stitches. So when I went through this, the doctor was very pleased. Gave me a book. And he said, I'm going to give you a small box, but don't open it now. Just take it home. So I took this box and this bag and I went back home. And the next day what happened is I didn't come to school. And after a week, Raju and my class teacher came home to visit me. And when he came home, he said, How are you? How are you feeling? Are you five? And I didn't see his front tooth. <laughs> and I said, But I'm fine, but what happened to your tooth? And he said, I don't know, yeah, I lost it. <laughs> and I said, oh, just a minute. And I opened the box that the doctor oh, gave me. Uh, and guess what was there? Uh, the tooth. Two the two tooth. <laughs> this, in India we had lots of forests. There was a huge forest. The lot of deer used to keep running around. They were playing happily in the forest. And there was one river right across the forest. 
This side of the river, there was a group of 500 deer. On the other side, another group of 500 deer. That also was very beautiful with the golden fleece. All of them said, yes, the, he is going to be our future king. So they called Hash the window. Hash the window. Let the dove come in. Oh, no, no. Hash the window. Oh, no, no. Hash the window. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life. You were only waiting for this moment. 